Bill came out in the 1960s, it changed the world. Women could enjoy sex without fears of unwanted pregnancy, so for some, life became easier. But for others, this freedom came at cost. I put on weight, and I had this feeling that every day I was going to take it, I was going to die the next day. I just have to talk about this with you. Now, a new wave of influencers sure on social media are encouraging women to go hormone-free. Ladies, let's talk about hormone-free birth control. Hormone-free birth control. Hormone-free birth control. But with unwanted pregnancies and abortions on the rise, I want to find out why more women are turning their backs on hormonal birth control and whether the choice is always worth it. <laughs> Hayley, Rebecca and Mia all have stories about contraception. Some good and some bad. I am a big believer in contraception. I would never not take it. I'm quite forgetful, you know, if I... Any time I've been on the pill, maybe like three days later, and I'm like, oh, if I not took that in a couple of days? <laughs> I've been on, like, so many types of contraception. So implant was the first one, mm -hmm. then the mini pill, then the patch then the marina coil, and now I'm actually on the Jaylena. What's that? It's just a smaller coil. Oh, OK. <laughs> See, I have really funky names. <laughs> <laughs> and now, like, I've found a contraception that works for me, and I can live my life without worrying about getting pregnant. So I've been on the combined pill since I was 14 or 15. I went on it to manage difficult periods at the time. Yeah, it's just worked for me for day one. When birth control works well, it can be really freeing. But there's a downside, side effects. Maria says she had a bad experience with the implant, a little rod that sits under the skin and releases hormones. My anxiety was completely out spiraling out of control. I was scared to go outside my flat. I was scared to go to Tesco's. Um, I was calling in sick to work. That was probably one of the darkest moments I've been in. I went from like a size six to eight to like a size 14. I had to keep buying new clothes and that would then have a detrimental effect on my mental health. I almost like stopped eating at some points because I was trying to shift the weight and I couldn't. It's pretty common for other women to report side effects like Maria's. But is it just a women's problem? I've come to Uddingston to ask a bunch of barbers what they know about birth control. Hi. Hi. Can you name five different types of contraception? Implant, the coil, a condom, nuts. <laughs> Can you name five different types of side effects women can get from contraception? Like their mood could change, gain weight or lose weight. Weight gain, maybe like a change of mood, kind of. Do you get a loss of appetite as well? Is that something? They know a bit, but have they ever really had to think about it? If you could guarantee that you could never get someone pregnant and you could take a pill every single day, would you just take it if it meant that you might gain weight, lose your sex drive? I would. I'd take it, aye. Do you know what I mean? Instead of my missus constantly taking it yeah. and having to worry about these things. You would take it, but then if these things started happening, you would, I would well, personally, I would definitely come off it. If I started gaining hours of weight and all that, mm -hmm. 100%. Aye, because you would feel terrible, wouldn't you? Aye. aye. But I suppose that is what Depressed. women feel like. Hi, I know. Like but, then they, the, but then at the same time, they should come off. So then, Why is so it then they come off it and then they want you to start using condoms. What are you saying then? You just use the condoms. Uh, I was just use, use the condoms. The condoms. <laughs> Be careful. How do you feel about condoms? I don't, I, I don't really ever use a condom, to be honest. Why is it you don't like wearing them? It's just, just not as good, I don't know. No, something I keep in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> I would never refuse. If she said, then I would obviously use one. But I just don't keep them. Do you think it's fair that, the way things are just now, women take on most of the burden when it comes to preventing pregnancy? It's obviously not fair, um, but there is a lot more options for women. There's not that many for guys. I don't think it's fair, but, like, in a way, like, uh, guys have got it all right. Uh, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And that's why they're 
quite reluctant to probably pursue male contraception, do you know what I mean? I don't think it's fair. I would like to see more options available for, for guys. But almost every week, some more or less frightening report appears in the press. Women have complained of birth control side effects for decades. But I got fatter, sore heads and no back aches and I couldn't be annoyed with sex. Birth control was ruining my life. But in more recent times, there's been a growing backlash on social media. Birth control is this generation's cigarettes. Videos about quitting birth control have exploded with millions of views. Most women, they start taking the pill, they get massively depressed, mentally ill, to be completely honest. There was one really standout video that I saw on TikTok, and it was of a girl using her pill, side effects leaflet as a blanket. I was just like, why am I putting that into my body? If I was to be young and on TikTok now, I would absolutely have changed my decision. Early period, late period, no period, constant period, heavy period. It was 99.9% .9 effective in ruining my life. TikTok says it has rules against misleading and false information on its platform. I showed some of these videos to Dr. Sinead Cook. She's a sexual health consultant who's concerned about what young people are seeing on social media. Did you know that birth control pills are actually classified as a class one carcinogen? The way that that's said sounds very scary. The pill is not something that causes cancer. It can increase the risk of some cancers, but it also decreases the risk of other cancers. That would be really off-putting to starting hormonal contraception. There's just no evidence that hormonal contraception or any contraception would cause um, infertility or brain tumours. We're aware that there's definitely increasing concerns being raised by young people about side effects. The biggest concern really is that it's encouraging people to either not start contraception or to stop their contraception without really understanding what then their other options are. The risk is that we're gonna just see people having unplanned pregnancies. TikTok told us that they've reviewed the content we flagged to them and taken down videos that violate their rules on medical misinformation. Let's take control of our fertility. So-called natural alternatives to hormonal like contraception are everywhere on Let's social media, from the fertility awareness method to period tracking apps. One popular app is called Natural Cycles. With 2.5 million registered users, it sells itself as digital contraception. The company behind it says it's 93% effective with typical use, the same they say as the pill. And influencers advertise it a lot. This is my app. For Amelia, it's worked for five years. She tracks her fertility by measuring her temperature. You press the button, so you just put it under your tongue and you wait for it to beep like that, and it'll tell you what your temperature is. So you put in your temperature for the day. If you're sick, it could change your temperature, obviously. Like if you didn't sleep very well, if you're hungover, then it kind of like discounts your temperature for that day. That's something that I would really worry about. Like if yeah. you have a long high or you're hungover, it would affect how accurate it is. Yeah, which it definitely does. So it like rules out that whole temperature for that day. Okay. It tells you, when you're not fertile and when you're fertile. So when it says not fertile, it's safe to have unprotected sex. So you don't need to use a condom. But if it changes to red, that means you need to be more careful and use a condom if you're having sex. It's made a big difference in that I'm not reliant on a hormonal pill every day that could mess with my mood, can mess with my natural periods. Like I feel quite regular and comfortable. And it does take a lot of work on your part to get used to taking your temperature and putting it in the app. Do you think that that's made clear for people who might just be starting out using the app? It's not clear from the beginning that it's going to take you a long time. I think it should be really clear from the get go that it's like a big commitment. It works for Amelia, but does it work for everyone? Say hi. Meet Penelope. Matilda's much loved, but very unexpected, baby girl. Boo! Matilda tried the pill, the injection, and the coil, but none of them suited her. I went back to the doctors and I said, I don't feel like anything's 
suiting me. I've, I've been doing this for like eight years at this point, from like 12 to 20, where I'm either bleeding all the time or not bleeding or suffering and in pain. And they just kind of turned around and said that there wasn't really anything that you could do to help with that. At this point, I'm like 22 in a relationship, but by no means at a point where I'm ready to like try for a baby or have a family. She says she found Natural Cycles advertised on social media and followed the app's instructions immediately. I just saw, I think green and red, most people think if you sat at a traffic light, red means stop, green means go. I assume the fact I'd entered my data meant that they knew enough about my body and my cycle that I could be having unprotected sex. I had been using it from the December and by the January I'd found out that I was pregnant. It just wasn't something I think I was quite ready for at the age I was maybe. Obviously I've come to terms with it and I love it now but it was definitely a massive shock. Natural Cycles says the app is effective from day one and that it will only give you green days when it has enough data to do so. I think effective from day one is like a very bold statement to make. I think the app putting something forward that after six months you can be having a happy and hormone free life, that would be a better statement to make than saying it's effective from day one, but that was definitely what attracted me to the app in the first place. It's been such a challenge, but obviously one of the best things ever. She's been brilliant. For someone who maybe Getting pregnant today wasn't quite the plan, but if it happened, it would still be a happy surprise. Then methods that are a bit less effective, like the period apps, can be great for them. But for somebody who really doesn't want to be pregnant, actually ditching potentially a very effective method of contraception for an app that requires a lot of user input and might be less effective, is really worrying. Natural Cycles told us that no method of contraception is 100% effective, even when used perfectly. In a statement, it said less than one in a hundred women become pregnant due to the algorithm assigning a green day when a user is fertile. And the method's real-life effectiveness is the same as its published rates.